Arctic Liquid Freezer 2, 120, 280, 360, all of them are excellent AIOs and I would even go as far as to say that they are the best you can get as long as you compare them size by size. But what about the 240? We did not cover that one yet but it's, I think it's definitely time. Arctic's Liquid Freezer 240 AIGB comes in the same unicorn dust poop covered packaging as any other model. Inside we'll find the usual stuff, mounting hardware for AMD and Intel, a completely pre-assembled AIO, some thermal paste and yeah that's about it. As we already covered almost every Liquid Freezer version in existence, I don't really see a point in going into too much detail about them. But if you really want to know everything, please watch one of the other videos linked in the description below. However, as this still is supposed to be a full review, let's at least go quickly over everything. Arctic's 240mm AIO exists in three different versions. The ARGB that we are talking about today, featuring the P12 ARGB fans, a RGB version, which is basically the same thing but with 4-pin RGB connectors on the fan instead of 3-pin ARGB ones, and the original Know Nothing version featuring their regular P12 fans. Performance-wise, there will be a difference because a P12 does not perform exactly like a P12 ARGB does. And we've seen examples of that in the past. And yes, Voodoo Witchcraft will be part of this video again. Comparison will then follow later. Installing the AIO is exactly as it was for every other liquid freezer. First we need to place the two rails onto the bottom side of the water block with the ends pointing away from the center but the edges of each rail pointing up and then screw them down. Then for Intel LGA 1700 we need to take the provided backplate with the central part sticking up, shoving the little screw holders into the most outer holes and securing them with the rubber o-rings on the other side. After positioning the backplate behind your motherboard we can take the Intel standoffs and screw them in. Over on AMD we first need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets and replace them with the spacers. From there we need to position the AMD mounting clips onto everything, the one with the rounded off edges needs to be at the top and the one with the a bit sharper edge at the bottom and then in case you're using an AM4 or AM5 CPU which is basically every CPU or every Ryzen CPU still in usage make sure to use the upper holes as this pushes everything slightly down and can greatly increase the AIO's performance and then screw them down. Now on both platforms, squeeze some of that thermal paste onto your CPU, slap that water block on it and screw that sucker down. One of the most amazing mini features or mini aspects about the Arctic Liquid Freezer lineup is that they made sure to minimize cabling to the fullest extent. To get the I.O. running, all you need to do is install the two cables coming out of the water block. The 3-pin ARGB for light, and the 4-pin PVM for fan speed. From there you don't have to do anything. And Arctic made sure to route both wires through those incredibly thick 450mm long tubes where both cables exit at the radiator and are then immediately connected to the fans. Everything nicely secured and tightened up using zip ties. Minimal overhang, minimum cable cluster, great. And now to quickly finish off the about section, in case you go for the ARGB version you will get a 2000 RPM quick fan pushing 48.8 CFM at 1.85 mm of H2O, all controllable via your motherboard software. And for the all black fans you will get 1800 RPM quick ones pushing 55.6 CFM at 2.2 mm of H2O. But it's not really the fans where it's at. One of the biggest contributors to the LF2 series performance is the freaking radiator. This 240 mm big red is actually 38 mm thick, making it one of the thickest reds available in an AIO package. And as a little bonus, the Millennium Falcon that Arctic calls water block design has a tiny whiny fan which blasts some additional air onto your VRM heatsinks. You may not need it, you probably really don't, but it definitely helps. And as the last bit of information, you can mount this thing to an LGA 17, 12 and every 1150 and then 2011 and 2066 on Team Inter. And for the red team you have AM5 and AM4 support. Okay, information covered, installation procedure covered, random stuff covered. I guess it's time for the benchmarks. Letting the Arctic Liquid Freezer 240 ARGB's pump and fan spin at 100% of their max speed showed us that we definitely need to create a testing bench that pumps out a lot more power. At 46.1 degrees C above ambient, the ARGB version of the dual fan Millennium Falcon 
managed to score a laughable 0.1 degrees C behind the 360 version. But do keep in mind that this result was achieved while pressing out 130 watts through the tiny socket. Take a Ryzen 5900X, 7900X, the i9, 12 or 1300K and the difference will become much, much larger. Replacing the fans with regular Arctic P12, basically then recreating the original Arctic P12 Freezer 240, revealed that the ARGB fans were a tiny bit better. 0.4 degrees C is, is really not a lot though, and that could also be kind of margin of error. Over on the noise performance side, we were seeing something very odd. The red line is the regular Arctic Liquid Freezer 240 and the yellow line is the ARGB version. On the first look, both versions are performing somewhat like expected. They are a bit behind the 360 and 280 versions and both of them are following exactly the same pattern of falling quite quickly and then stagnating because the red and pump do the most of the work at that point anyway. However, please note how incredibly high the minimum noise level of the two versions is compared to the 360 and 280. In fact, what we expected is that all liquid freezer versions, no matter the size, will all stagnate at somewhat the same noise level, give or take 2 or 3 percent of course, because you know different fan amount and fan sizes but somewhat in the same range. However, the 240 is the exception for this case. After a bit of investigation we found the issue. And it's not the pump, ours is not broken, it got the verification badge on there. No, it's the VRM fan. As it turns out, our specific model here is creating a slightly higher pitch noise than any other model. And sorry we tried but none of our mics is able to pick it up. We however are and so is our dB meter, resulting in a much higher noise level while letting the fans do basically nothing. Keep in mind, if you would make the fans stop spinning at all, this line would just continue to do a horizontal line because the mini fan is keeping making that damn noise. We here are trying to work by the principle we are testing what we are getting and if there is a problem with maintaining a specific quality level across thousands of samples, well, we will test the one out of range and assume that that specific one is average. Of course, only if it doesn't have like an obvious defect or damage. But in this case, the VRM fan is spinning fine. When only measuring its speed, it is not quicker nor slower than any other liquid freezer VRM fan. Give or take a couple of percent, of course, but it's it just a tiny bit louder. However, if we ignore that sucker for a second, both the 240 and 240 ARGB versions are still maintaining an amazing noise to performance ratio. From 100% to 60% fan speed, they are annihilating other 240mm coolers like Cooler Masters ML240 and ZXC's Kraken X53 and even Nokia's Top Dog and HD15 did not stand a chance. Once you get below that 50% fan speed, well, the line should have been going somewhere here, but they, it can't, or they can't, because that VRM fan is making that noise. And this then lets the cooler fall behind everything we just mentioned. Now, let's talk about quality and design. Quality-wise, liquid freezers are just top-notch. Everything is sturdy as hell, installation is easy, everything is very well made and very well thought through, especially the cabling. Design-wise, Millennium Falcon? I will leave the judgment up to you, but the red and tubes are nice. Thick and rigid, the stuff I do like. So, as I said in the beginning, Arctic Liquid Freezers are still the best AIOs that you can get for your system. I stand by that and our benchmarks pretty much prove that. Both the 240 and 240 ARGB are the highest 240s on the list and keeping in mind that we are not pushing nearly enough power through the system to create a measurable difference, it seems like for things like a Ryzen 7, i7, there will not be a lot of space between the dual and triple fan version. So in general, for these use cases and everything below, we can absolutely recommend the Liquid Freezer 240 and 240 ARGB. However, for the very first time, we found ourselves in a situation that this little VRM fan did more harm than good. For any other Liquid Freezer we had before, it blew a bit of air into the VRMs, making them run a bit cool. And let's be honest here, they don't need that air. It won't hurt them, that's for sure, but they don't really need it. We tested this little fan specifically in another liquid freezer review. I believe it was 360, but I don't remember. But the point was, yes, you will get a couple of degrees colder, that's true. But if you experience that higher pitched noise coming from there, just 
pull out the cable behind it to make it stop. It won't really hurt performance at all, but it will get those two lines to merge with the other liquid freezers, which would make the noise to performance ratio of this baby a lot better. But okay, this should be it for the liquid freezer 240 and 240 ARGB. At this point, a huge thank you to Arctic for sending it over, but if you want to keep watching, have a look at our take on the Arctic liquid freezer 280 ARGB. It's like the 240, just a lot better and without the VRM cooler noise. On a side note, we also have channel memberships. And if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to get a liquid freezer. But not this one, this one. Cause we need to find out who freezes liquid better, Arctic or Vivor. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.